What's going on, Retro Gaming fans, and welcome to Rehab Gaming. So in today's episode, we're going to discuss the fatal flaw of the Super Nintendo's Star Fox game cartridge, and why there is something inside this cartridge that might cause you some concern. So stay tuned, and we'll get right at it. Today we're going to discuss one of the major issues that is affecting U.S. release Star Fox games for the Super Nintendo console. Now, I actually have a Japan copy of this game as well. It is inside a U.S. release cartridge case. However, the board on the inside is a Japan release board. So I've noticed not only with these three copies that I have currently, uh, one is a 1.0 US revision, the second one is a 2.0 US revision, and I believe it's going to be this one up here. And unfortunately on the inside there was a part used on the main board that over time fails and can cause catastrophic damage to your game card. Now I will be showing you exactly what I found and why this is a concern and if you own this copy of this game then you should be concerned as well because if untreated this problem may make your game completely unplayable. Now I have spoken with other people who have these copies of this game and they have had similar issues with their copies and believe it or not, it's one of those things you really don't pay attention to until the game stops working or until you start to hear something rattling around on the inside of your game park. And as of right now, it's totally unclear of why this specific part that was used for these main boards is necessary for the game to function. There have been some people reportedly had a success with using their game without this specific part installed on the board after it fell off on its own. However, just to keep in the tradition of maintaining your collection in as original condition as possible, we're going to go over why this is a concern, why you should probably look for it in your copies in your collection, and how we can preserve this game to prevent it from being destroyed by this ticking time bomb that may reside inside your cartridge. The interesting thing about the component that actually fails inside this cartridge is something you wouldn't really think of right offhand, but it's actually a SMD capacitor that is on the back side of the main board that is causing most of these issues. So over time, these capacitors are having a tendency of leaking onto the main board and completely corroding their contacts, getting to the point where the capacitor gets knocked loose from the game board. And if you know anything about capacitors and the electrolytic fluid being leaked out onto a printed circuit, that electrolytic fluid does have the capacity to eat away at the traces on that circuit board, causing that game to be unplayable. So like I said, I have a total of three US release copies that we're going to be taking a look at today and that we're going to be repairing using a variety of different methods. All of them are going to be the same to the point of we're going to be replacing those problematic capacitors, cleaning up the issue areas and all of the damage caused by the electrolytic fluid so far and trying to mitigate that from becoming an issue further on down the road. So depending on your comfortability with your soldering skills, I'm going to cover a total of three different methods of replacing the onboard capacitor with a like value or comparable capacitor that will work in the instance inside of this game cart. On the inside of these game carts, they actually have a 6 volt 22 microfarad capacitor that is soldered to the board and they are SMD electrolytic capacitors. I actually have a fair bit of variety of different capacitors that we're going to be using to replace the ones on these carts. I do have a SMD capacitor that is rated at 16 volts instead of 6 volts at 22 microfarads. It has a slightly larger footprint than the original capacitor 
So it's going to be slightly difficult to get this capacitor soldered onto the board as compared to what it would take to get the original like size capacitor on there. But what I'm hoping is, is that the increase in voltage will actually help reduce the likelihood of future issues with the capacitor that we're going to be using to replace the current onboard capacitors. So for this SMD electrolytic cap, that is going to be the 16 volt 22 microfarad. I actually do have some 16 volt 22 microfarad uh, tantalum capacitors that I'm going to try and get soldered onto one of these boards. And then we also have some 16 volt 22 microfarad THT capacitors that we're going to be using as well. So depending on how comfortable you are with your soldering skills, uh, it might be out of your comfort range to use the tantalum capacitors or the slightly larger replacement electrolytic SMD caps. So that's why I wanted to cover using a THT cap. Now, personally, it will work perfectly fine, but in my opinion, I like to try and keep things as original as possible, or at least try to use similar technology or components that I can to what was originally installed on these uh, game cards. But since THT capacitors are a little bit easier to work with, especially when you're soldering them into place, that's why I'm going to cover installation of those types of capacitors on your game card because most users who aren't familiar with soldering in general or who don't practice uh, soldering skills that often will be a little more comfortable with that process. So for starters, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this 1.0 revision away and we're going to focus on this 1.0 revision that I placed here on the right hand side and this 1.2 US revision that I have here on the left. Now the 1.0 revision that I have up here actually has the SMD cap inside that has become detached from the main board and you can kind of hear it rattling around inside the cartridge. And the 1.2 still has the SMD cap attached to its main board. So we're going to go ahead and crack these open and I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like when one, the capacitor becomes detached from your main board and two, the process of which the capacitor leaking causes damage to the solder joints for the capacitor and what it looks like right before you're going to have to start worrying about that capacitor falling off. And as we pull off the front of each of these cartridges, you'll see the difference between the 1.0 and the 1.2 revision boards. And they look fairly similar from the front. You look at it from the back. You can see where that SMD capacitor is located on this 1.2. And uh, where the SMT capacitor is actually missing on the 1.0 board. And this right here is the little capacitor that's running around inside. So let's zoom in to the US 1.2 revision board and I'll show you what your game board more than likely looks like on the inside right before that capacitor becomes dislodged from its pads. Here is a close up look of that 22 microfarad 6 volt SMD electrolytic capacitor that's on the 1.2 board. Now it does look like that there is a designation for the positive side of your electrolytic cap printed on the board right there and also the black stripe of the ca uh, capacitor that designates the negative terminal of your capacitor is going to be located at the top. So as you kind of look right here on this joint it looks a little fuzzy. And the reason why that is, is because that solder is actually being eaten away by the electrolytic fluid that is leaking out of the bottom of this capacitor. So as soon as that electrolytic fluid leaks out from that capacitor, the first place it goes is its connection points to the main board. That electrolytic fluid eats away at the solder causing this hairy, gunky junk to build up right there. So here's a little bit better view of 
that solder that is starting to be eaten away by the electrolytic fluid. There's some green stuff that's built up there. That's going to be the corrosion that is formed from that electrolytic fluid. And you can try and scrape at it a little bit and it'll reveal a little bit of shiny solder underneath it. However, when this starts eating away, it acts like an acid. And when it eats away at the solder, it leaves micro pores that can create fissures over time. So the pores are little microscopic holes in the solder itself that can create cracking in the solder. And once that solder begins to crack, anytime that you drop this game, you actually may run the risk of this cap completely breaking off of the mainboard. Now when I was actually cleaning this 1.0 game cart that we have, and I'll show it right here, I noticed that this thing had the SMD capacitor running around on the inside. And that's going to be the pad that the SMD capacitor came from. And you can kind of tell where a little bit of that solder is uh, corroded and has been eaten away from the electrolytic fluid that came out of this cap. And this is gonna be the bottom of the cap. So you see where the two legs go through that plastic piece on the bottom of this capacitor? That is gonna be where the fluid is leaking out of that capacitor from. And as you can also tell on the bottom of that plastic bottom plate, there is a lot of what looks like molten plastic and some corrosion and some other gunk that's on there. So that just goes to show that this electrolytic fluid is eating away at the plastic base of this capacitor, is corroding the contacts and the solder that joins that capacitor to the board, and it's running the risk of damaging these traces here. Now I did go over it with a soldering iron briefly to prevent e even more of the damage from occurring to this specific board. And when I found this, I thought to myself, well, I might want to double check my other copies to see if it's having a similar issue. And like with the 1.2 board, it was having a similar issue. And also with the 1.1 board that I set off, or 1.0 board that I set off to the side, it was also having the same issue as well. But both of those caps were still mounted to that PCB. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this pad right here, we're going to get it all cleaned off, we're going to throw some flux on there, get some desolder braid, run over it, try and get all of that gunk solder off of those pads, and just see how badly those pads were damaged, and to see if we can actually still work with those pads that are there. Now, if you look at the surface mount resistors that's up on the top hand side of your screen, I believe one might be a resistor, the other one a diode or vice versa, I'm not really sure, I'd have to double check those. But, actually no, uh, that one says C3, so I believe that's going to be a capacitor, uh, ceramic capacitor. That one says R4, so that's going to be some sort of resistor, I'd have to look up the 102 stamping on it. And then it looks like it had a place for another resistor for different game boards. And then you also have some unpopulated areas over here. But if you look down next to that resistor and that capacitor, you can see some white buildup around those components. And that white buildup is also left over from the capacitor electrolytic fluid leaking out onto the board. And from me trying to get that cleaned up with isopropyl alcohol. So in order to test those pads, what we can do is we can scrape away the uh, solder mask that's right up here above the pad where it leads off to. And then we can also use some of these vias down here for the other pad that links to it and test continuity to make sure that we don't have a break on these traces from the pad down to the remainder of that circuit. Looking at the area nearby where that capacitor was mounted, I see this little via right here, and that via does look to be damaged. So I'm gonna actually flip over the board, and I'm gonna show you the other side of the board where that via goes. And that's it right there. So it looks like the electrolytic fluid completely seeped through that via and damaged it all the way through. So. This is one of those risks that I was referring to about 
letting this go and possibly making it to where your game board is completely ate up and to where the cart will no longer work. So it's always the best case scenario that you open up your cart, you see if you are having issues with that electrolytic fluid leaking out from that capacitor, and if so, make sure that you try and clean it up as best as you can to stop the process of that electrolytic fluid from causing damage to your board. Now, in order to test this area of the board to make sure that the traces from the pads are not broken to the rest of the circuit, I'm going to be using my multimeter in continuity mode, and I'm actually going to be using one of these vias down here at the bottom to test this bottom pad. So this via right here, try and get my probe down in it, and I'm going to move my probe up, and there I have continuity. And then the next pad, I'm actually going to be putting my probe right here on this solder point here that looks like it's a via that became full of solder. And then I'm going to touch this pad up on the upper hand side. So it looks like both of those do have continuity through them. They are still connected in circuit, so we don't have to worry about trying to repair a broken trace. But we do need to try and get all of this solder that has been affected by the electrolytic fluid off of this main board. And here's the reason why. Solder that becomes uh, saturated in electrolytic fluid, like I said, becomes porous. Those pores can hold that electrolytic fluid in the solder, and if you solder on top of it, that electrolytic fluid becomes encased in that new solder. And so after time goes on, the electrolytic fluid can continue to eat away at that solder that is existing around it and eat all the way down to the trace of the main board and possibly eat away at all the copper of the trace itself. So in order to prevent that from happening, we're going to remove all of the solder off the board. We're going to wick it all away. We're going to try and give it a real good scrubbing. And another thing we might want to look at is these SMD components on the upper hand side, like the resistor, the capacitor over here, these three capacitors in line right there, and see if we can just get all of that gunk out of there. Now this is the revision 2 board, or excuse me, the revision 1.2 board that I have, and if you notice, there's still some of that white gunk up there by the capacitors like we had on the revision 1 board. And there's also still some of that gunk up here by the resistor and the capacitor here. So we're also going to be tackling this by getting that capacitor off the board, trying to get all of that solder pulled up so we have some bare proper traces. And then we're going to see about trying to treat these areas of these components as well. And then we'll move on to the 1.0 board that I set off to the side. And then I'll show you what it looks like on the Japanese board that I have and the weird part is it doesn't seem like the Japanese board has been affected as the US version boards. So let's actually take a look at that Japanese board and show you exactly what that circuit should look like if that capacitor wasn't leaking. So here we have the Japanese main board that I have and I'm going to go ahead and slide it over so you can see the model number. When I did research on this model number, it came back to it being a Japanese revision board. And down here is where their surface mount electrolytic capacitor is going to be located for this revision. Now it's kind of interesting because as I look at this capacitor and I look at the joint, there's a little bit of tarnish there but it's nowhere near as bad as the US revision boards. So I'm actually gonna keep an eye on this and see if over time it does end up leaking like the US revisions. And I'm gonna try and keep it in as original condition as possible. I might use some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush to try and scrub up those joints just to be safe. But this goes to show that it seems like it's only the US revisions that are being affected, and I really don't know why. I don't know if it's a difference between how that circuitry was constructed for that game board, or how that capacitor is used in that circuitry that's causing it undue stress that the developers weren't uh, accounting for. But either way, we're going to be fixing that issue, 
with a capacitor with a slightly higher voltage rating and using different types of technology for the capacitor replacement. So for this project, I'm actually gonna be using some Kester 186 No Clean Flux. I'm gonna go ahead and prep my solder braid with some flux and then I'm gonna prep this area of the board with some flux as well. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to lift up all of this old solder from the pads. So I'm gonna clean off my soldering iron just to make sure that I have a nice clean tip to work with. I'm gonna take this desoldering braid, stick it on top of the pads, and try and wick up all of that solder that's currently still on the pads. So as I, I was moving that desoldering braid across the area, I was actually noticing that it was starting to hook on the leading edge of these pads here. And then we got a little bit of solder right here, it's come off on the main board, and it looks like these pads are fairly clean. I'm not seeing really too much solder on there, there's just a little bit so I'm going to come back with some nice fresh clean solder, I'm going to deposit some solder on those pads, I'm going to wick off that solder as well. And what this is doing is help lifting all the old solder up off of the pads, so we have some nice clean solder to work with. And there we go. So that reflection that you see up here is actually going to be the flux that's still remaining on the board. So I'm going to go ahead and clean off my solder tip. I'm going to grab some isopropyl alcohol and I'm going to clean that area. So the isopropyl alcohol that I'm using is going to be 91%. And then I'm just going to use a little cotton swab. Try and soak all of that garbage up. So when you're working with something, you want to make sure that you have a clean site to work with. And this little junk that's up there, you don't want it to be there. Come back with a little more ice profile alcohol. And give that area another little scrub. And we'll try and get some of that residue off of there too. I'll we'll make sure that area is nice and clean. So we're actually going to come back. We're going to put a little more flux down on this. And we're going to prepare this for the electrolytic SMD cap that I have as a replacement. Now this is going to be where it's going to be a little difficult. So. This capacitor, and I'll just kind of show you by placing it on top of the pads, completely covers those pads. So we're going to have to try and get a little creative with that capacitor. Now to be honest, it has been a little while since I've even messed with a surface mount electrolytic this small. So this is going to be just a little difficult 
try and pull off. So we're going to put a little bit of blob of solder on that pad right there. Okay. So we're going to take our capacitor, clean off our soldering iron, remove a little bit of that solder, because we just want a small little mound of solder on there. We're going to take the cap, we're going to heat up this pad, and we're going to push the cap into place. And here I'm actually going to move my work so it's a little easier for me to work with. And still try and keep it on screen. And just like I was afraid of, this cap being this size in comparative to the pads, it's making things a little difficult. And don't worry if you have to try and come back at it and do it again. It's not going to hurt anything. As long as you have enough flux there, you'll be fine. All right. So we kind of have it in place. But here's where our issue lies. That's that other pad under there. That is going to be extremely hard to try and even get this capacitor set down on there. So I'm actually going to take some more flux, put some more flux in the area, and come back at it. Now this soldering tip that I'm using is a pretty large tip. So if I'm having a little too much difficulty with trying to do it this way, I might end up changing out my tips. But the reason why this tip is one that I like to use frequently is because it can get a decent amount of heat in a place and get something tacked down fairly easily. This thing just does not want to cooperate. All right. So we got it tacked in. We're going to try and see if we can lift up a little bit. Try and get some solder under there. Throw a little more flux underneath there. Clean off our tip. Get it tinned. See if we can flood this area down here with some solder. And that thing is all kinds of crooked. This is exactly what I mean with a SMT component being larger than the pads that you're working with and with everything being so small and why it's so difficult to work with. That's why it's extremely important that you have good quality flux and good quality solder because it makes life 10 times easier than what it could be with lower quality stuff.
So let's see if we can deposit a little bit of solder on both of these pads. Like so. Now let's try and move this capacitor into position through the side by heating both the pads at once and pushing the cap on. And it looks like that's not going to be working for me. So instead of doing it that way, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can actually get a tantalum capacitor soldered onto this board. Because since those are not accessible with that large footprint of a cap, I don't have high confidence in my ability trying to get that cap soldered on. So this is going to be the tantalum cap that we're going to be working with. This is also going to be a 16 volt 22 microfarad tantalum cap and we're going to be trying to get it in here on the pads and as you can tell that cap is a little bit smaller it's still inside the range of the gap for the capacitors so it's going to be a little easier to try and get it soldered into place so i'm going to go ahead tin my soldering iron throw a little bit of solder on there I'm going to take this very tiny tantalum capacitor I'm going to try and move it into place as I heat it up. And it's a little low, so I'm going to try and push it up a little further. So it looks like we got a decent joint on the bottom side. We're going to go ahead and make sure that we have a decent joint on the top side. Make sure the cap is sitting flat on the board. Throw some flux in there. See if we can get some of a little bit of that extra solder up off of there just to make sure that we're not bridging any connections. Now we're going to clean that area with some isopropyl alcohol and we're going to do some testing to make sure we don't have any bridging. Ooh. That flux is really sticky. So just to give you an idea of how tiny that capacitor is, that's my finger now, of my pointer finger. That capacitor is tiny. So the only way that I'm actually able to do this is the zoom feature on my camera and looking at it on a screen so I can make sure that I have everything in the right place. And if you were doing this without the aid of a microscope or a TV screen or a camera, 
I'd say that this job would be a little difficult. So we're going to look at that side. That side looks okay. We take a side view of the capacitor. And it doesn't look like anything is touching or bridging. Looks like both sides of that capacitor are soldered into place nicely on that side. And let's try and clean some of that isopropyl alcohol out of there so we get a little better view. Now it looks like the capacitor is sitting fairly decently on that side. Like so. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to test this. Make sure that this capacitor is not shorting out. But before I do that, I want to clean off my workstation. So I'm going to grab a rag. All right, so we got the workstation cleaned off. Got the capacitor soldered in place. I will admit that it's not the most gorgeous job I have ever done on a SMD cap. But we don't have a short, which is good. I'm going to see if this goes down to here. Good. And we're going to see if the top side comes over to this via connection here. Perfect. So that capacitor is properly soldered into place. And it just goes to show how easy it is to use one of these SMD components and get it soldered in properly versus using one of these SMD components where the footprint is huge and the pad spacing is very tiny. So we're gonna go ahead and do that for that board. Everything looks good because if there's one thing that I've learned over the years is that if you have something that's on there and it's not causing a problem, and you're not having any issues with the connectivity or anything like that, once you start trying to be a perfectionist and messing with stuff, you're probably gonna make it a lot worse than what it already is. So we'll go ahead and go to the other board and get that capacitor removed and also replace it with a tantalum capacitor. And just to show the difference between the revision 1.0 and I believe the revision 1.2 boards for the United States release. Here on the bottom is going to be the revision 1.2. It's going to have the model number LROG1807 and the 1.0 release boards is going to have the model number LROG1801. And instead of actually putting the tantalum capacitor on the other Revision 1.0 board, we're actually going to do the easier method of using a THT capacitor, like this one, on that board, and then we'll save the tantalum for this 1.2 board. So this is the other US Revision 1.0 board that I have on hand. And I wanted to show you exactly what this looked like once that electrolytic fluid leaked out of the cap and what it does. So as you can see right there, the electrolytic fluid actually ate away at that plastic base. And you can see how it looks a little melted. And it pulled up on the bottom side there. And that connection right there is extremely corroded. And then we'll take a look at the top of the board and the electrolytic fluid has actually seeped through the top side as well and has gotten onto that solder pad as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover this area in flux and we're going to go ahead and remove this capacitor and replace it with our THT capacitor. Let's take our Kesco 186, get a nice little pool on both sides of this capacitor. So, and we're going to add a little bit of solder to our soldering iron tip. Come in here on the top side, and I'm going to hold the board into place. I'm going to heat up this side, 
while depositing a little bit of solder on there. Heat up the bottom side while depositing a little bit of solder on there. And what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna gently lift up on one side after I get that pad heated up, try and lift this capacitor away. All right. So it needs to come up just a little bit. Put some more flux in there. Get a little more solder on our soldering iron after we clean off the tip again. And we'll try and lift this side up off the board a little more. There we go. All right, so I felt that side of the capacitor release. There it is right there. So we're gonna let that cool down. I'm gonna flip the board over, that way it's a little easier for me to see it. Like so. Then we're gonna do something similar to the other side. Clean off the tip. Put a little more solder on there. Now let's see if we can get this side of the capacitor lifted off. Oh, there you go. And it's just as easy as that. So we're gonna go ahead and float over these contacts here. That one looks pretty worse for wear, actually. So we got some cleaning to do. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the board back around so I can see it a little better. And we're gonna try and get that all cleaned up. So we got a little more flux on the board and we need to revive this pad here. You see how all that dark gunk that was built up on the pad? That's oxidation on that pad. Solder does not stick to oxidation. So we gotta scrape it off very gently and I'm sorry about moving the camera there. Scrape it off very gently and there you see that nice happy pad underneath. So we're gonna come in with a little bit more solder. Flip some more solder in on this board. Clean up this top pad. And that doesn't look too bad now. We still gotta do some work on this bottom pad. We want to make sure all of that gunk is completely gone so we're not trapping it underneath our new connection. We'll come in here with some solder braid, or desoldering braid, excuse me. I'm going to coat it in flux and I'm going to start wicking some of that solder away. What I want to see is a nice clean pad after we get everything lifted up off this board. Let me snip off some of this used section of desoldering braid. Give the area a little more flux, give my braid a little more flux. Then we'll come back in here a second time and see if we can lift off any more of that gross, nasty, contaminated solder. That doesn't look too bad. So what you want to see when you're done with wicking up all this solder you want to see a nice pad underneath like that so with all of that dark oxidation under there that was caused by the leaking electrolytic fluid it caused the chemical reaction to that pad 
where if we would have tried to solder on top of that, nothing would stick. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take all of this black gunk, which is a mixture of the oxidation and our uh, flux that we used, get it up off the board so we have a clean surface to work with. So give me one second, we'll be right back. So now that I got all of that old flux and residue off the board, and we're left with these nice, fresh, clean pads. So before I even solder on the capacitor, I'm gonna double check to make sure that these pads are still connected. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be. However, it's always good to check before you move on to the next step of your work. So we have continuity there. And I might need to move a little bit of this solder mask off of these vias so I can get a decent connection. Actually, instead of going through all that, this up here is going to be a ground pin. And we got continuity there. Well, it's not necessarily a ground pin, but it is the pin that goes to that side of the cap. And actually, that is going to be the positive side because there is the plus markation on the top of this board. So it looks like both of those pads are still connected to their traces. Our next step is going to be trying to get the pads prepared to accept the new capacitor. Now the reason why I have the board upside down now is because it's going to be a little easier for me to solder the new capacitor in. And how I'm having to position the capacitor, it's going to look like that. So that is your negative lead that's towards the bottom, the positive lead towards the top. I bent the leads down so they will go to the board so this capacitor could actually lay flat on the board. And the reason why the capacitor is going to be laying that way instead of the other way with the capacitor legs bent the other direction where it would be kind of facing like that is because there's actually a ridge where the back of the cart shell sits and there's a ridge going on the backhand side that kind of goes in this direction and I don't want this capacitor to interfere with any of that. So we're going to go ahead and trim up our leads. I'm going to use a pair of side cutters to cut all this excess off. And this is what we're going to be left with. So this is what we're going to be using to solder on the board. Do a quick little measurement test here. Let's get in the middle of the frame. So it looks like there's still a little bit of those leads that I need to trim off. So we'll go ahead and trim off just a tiny bit more because I don't want it to be too far off of the pad. There we go. That's a lot better. So this is what we're going to use. And I'm actually going to use a pair of tweezers because as you can tell, my big fat finger in compared to trying to move something so small and precisely is not going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to solder that cap in right there. And to start off, we're going to flood the area with a little bit of flux. Clean off our soldering iron so we have a fresh tip to work with. Sorry about moving the camera. Unfortunately, my tip cleaner is right over here on the desk and my camera mount is unfortunately susceptible with movement. So we're gonna go ahead, put a little bit of solder on the tip of our iron. I'm gonna take our tinned tip and we're gonna tin up these pads real quick. Now with our pads already tinned, I'm going to move the solder around to make sure that we don't have any excess and then just kind of remove the excess solder because we want little domes kind of like what that bottom pad looks like. The top pad has a little too much extra solder on it so I'm going to wick some of that off. Looking a little better 
and go with another swipe. There we go. So those are two pads that are tinned properly and they are ready for the capacitor to be placed in. So here's the reason why I like using the tip that I'm using is because I can heat up both of these pads at the exact same time while I'm dropping this capacitor into place. And I want to make sure that it has a firm solder joint securing this capacitor on there. Alright, so it looks like I need to move it down a little bit. Oh, shit. And unfortunately, this is what it's like in real life. Nothing always goes exactly this way as you want it to on the first try. It's going to take a couple of uh, tries to get there. All right, how are we looking? Let's try and scoop this up a little bit. It's probably about right there. All right, so now we're directly on top of our pads. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little more solder on each of the pads to make sure that we have enough solder securing these leads down. And so I can see that top one a little better. Let's flip our board around. There we go. So now I can see that pad this leg right there is on the very edge of the pad, so we're going to go ahead and feed a little more solder in. And there you have it. That's how you solder in a THT capacitor to SMD pads on a board. So we'll go ahead and lift it up right there. This is what your solder joints are going to look like. So that capacitor isn't going anywhere, it is sitting flush on the pads perfectly spaced you're not going to have any issues with bridging or shorts so all we need to do now is clean up that area and i'll show you exactly what it looks like when i'm done getting it cleaned up so here we have the side all cleaned up and i'm actually going to show you what it looks like right there please excuse this hair here unfortunately that is unavoidable when you have pets so this is what your solder joint should look like. They're all nice and shiny, which means you've got good solder flow. They're all directly on top of the pads, which means you have good adhesion, and you don't have any of the legs of the capacitor sticking out from your solder joint, so you can be sure that that is a secure joint. And here is the SMD capacitor that we took off. So that capacitor is actually not too much smaller than the one we replaced it with and I'll go ahead and show you the bottom and that thing looks horrible so that's what electrolytic fluid will do to the bottom side of a capacitor after it leaks out just eats it all up now all we get to do is take this cart put it all back together and she's ready to use and there you have it that's how you replace a leaking electrolytic surface mount capacitor on a Star Fox Super Nintendo game cart using both a THT capacitor and a surface mount tantalum capacitor. As for replacing that last capacitor on the board that we have left over with the tantalum, what we're going to do is we're actually going to save that video for a bonus midweek release. Thank you for joining us today and we hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like down below. Also, don't forget that we have links to our social media pages, which you can find in the description. So without further ado, thanks for stopping by, and we hope you have a wonderful day.